So we've been kind of innovating, I think, in the changing industry, in the changing landscape, to work for our set of assets to give us a very sustainable path to be able to say to you that our media business will be profitable, is profitable, will continue to be profitable, and I believe will grow despite the downward pressure because of the growth of Peacock. So what I love actually about the company is that we will sort of change and we will innovate and we will say those things. And we will sort of just go, okay, maybe we're wrong then or the business that was the right decision then and now this is the right decision now. I think that's like an amazing thing. That's what makes a very dynamic company. One of the other big differences with OnlyFans is we don't have any advertising. Mm -hmm. So no ad revenue, no advertising stakeholders. And that means that when we make business decisions, we make them with our creators in mind mm -hmm. rather than advertisers in mind. And we also don't track user data or monetize user data in any way. So if you're on OnlyFans and you're looking at someone's lovely feet or you're looking at Whitney's content or you're looking at anything else, you know, we are not tracking My that feet data. could go on there. How dare you? <laughs> I've always been about the business of making sure that I was multifaceted in my presentation and my delivery and just to make sure that I'm appealing to the audience and being mindful and cognizant of who actually is out there watching. Are you naturally a spicy food guy? I hate spicy food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is already <laughs> what letter grade would you give to Hollywood's recovery in the wake of the pandemic and strikes? A very, very low grade. One, two, two three. three. I only eating half. Yeah, no, same with me, and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. And then careful around your eyes. I'm not trying to be cool. No. I can't do this again. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> It's still such an awesome sandbox. Yeah. You know, we're working on a movie right now, a live action movie. When we get back to South Park, it's gonna be like, oh, right, here we go. Like, I can't wait to see, find, you know, hang out with those characters again to be cheesy about it. Like, we love, we love, we love doing South Park. And then I think we'll just, we will last long enough to reach the singularity and pass it off to our AI. <laughs> I mean, which sounds crazy, but people are talking like that now. Yeah. You know, there's a huge opportunity coming with AI and it's going to change the music industry the same way Pro Tools did. You know, when Pro Tools came along, people said, um, what is this? We need live instruments. And you realize it's a tool to create more music. But do I think it's going to be an exciting tool in the future for making great music? Yeah. I think there's a 14-year-old in the bedroom somewhere who's about to make amazing music using the tools of AI. But we have to get the business model sorted out first. In the last two to three years, we have seen hundreds of families stand up, speak out, and file lawsuits, alleging that social media is partly to blame for their child's death. And that is where the, the conversation or the question has changed. I'm thrilled to bring you our second annual Ones to Watch in Entertainment, Arts, and Culture. We think of it as we're in, the, in an attention economy. And ultimately, people are choosing to spend more of their time on social and gaming, in some cases, than television. And so it's, it's our job to just raise the bar for what free entertainment looks like. So I think one of the kind of unexpected, wonderful impacts of how challenging the ecosystem has become is that we have had to make sure that we are more committed to content than we've ever been before. 